Hey everyone. This week we are on to principle number four, uh, which is that we need to change our KPIs. We need to change our performance incentives. And the reason we need to do this is because they create very strange and unexpected behavior in our organizations. When you have a whole bunch of different people that are lined up around all sorts of different measures, uh, then it starts to drive this internal competition, which is what, it's something that we want to avoid, right? It creates friction in our organization, it slows down decisions, um, it creates the wrong type of conflict and competition in the organization. What we want to do is that we want to start to align all of our measures around what matters for our customers. That way we can draw the entire organization into delivering that purpose. It's really, really critical. Um, now, I'm not going to be able to share with you a whole bunch of ways that we do that. Um, other than to say that the general process is around go and understand what's important to your customers and then go and design metrics that matter for those outcomes. Uh, we we want to start to shift into uh, leading metrics, which I'll get into a little bit in next week's episode. So we want to be able to be measuring those things that help us to look forward and project forward as to whether or not we're going to have a good impact for our customers rather than uh, looking in the rear view mirror all the time. But we'll get into leading and lagging measures uh, next week. What I wanted to share with you uh, this episode was a little story about how, how and why it's so important to change these performance incentives. Because I think sometimes we sort of, we, we, can, we can rationalize that, hey, we might be driving some unexpected behavior, but I don't think we actually understand the extent of how badly this can be impacting throughout our organization. So I want to share with you a story today. Um, and that story is from uh, a time where I was sitting in a call center, listening to phone calls um, on behalf of a client. I'd been sitting with a particular consultant who was helping to work through internet faults. And I actually joined the call right at the very end. This customer was had been on the phone for about 40 minutes, I think, at that point, And the consultant had managed to fix the internet connection. Awesome. Uh, and as we're sort of finishing up, this consultant said, okay, so um, we're all sorted, internet's working, you know, confirmed it was all working. Customer says, yep, it's going great, awesome. And the consultant says, is there anything else that I can help you with today? And the customer says, yeah, I've actually got this billing problem, like I've got something happening on my bill that's a bit odd and I'd like some help with it. Just someone to talk me through it. And the consultant said, that's absolutely fine. So what we're going to do is um, I am going to, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to hang up on this phone call and you'll be taken through to a short survey um, and you'll be asked to rate my performance today from 0 to 10. And remember, this is about me and how I helped you to fix your internet. And so you'll be asked to go through that short survey and it's really important that you fill that out, please. Once you've filled that out and you hang up the phone, I'll call you back and we'll put you through the billing department and they can help you with your inquiry. The customer's jazz. He's got a working internet connection. Yep, sure, no worries. So we hang up on the customer and wait for a couple minutes, try outbounding um, the customer on that number, get an engaged tone. The consultant says to me, oh, he's probably still filling out the survey. So we wait a couple minutes more, dial again, manage to get the customer on the line at this point. And the consultant says, cool, are you ready to go through to the billing department? The customer says, yep, ready to go. And we dropped the call, transferred the call, dropped it straight into the end of what was the queue for the billing and the credits department. So that customer, the next thing that customer heard was a, was an engaged tone and hold music. And what happened next was an absolute gift, right? So I said to the consultant, help me, like, why did you do all of that? Talk to me, talk me through. He says, well. First off, we're measured on um, our net promoter score survey compliance. And I needed to put the customer through to that survey and make sure that he filled out that survey to me because if I put him through to the billing department and then he had a bad experience or they forgot to put him through to the survey and he didn't fill it out or he filled it out with a low number, that comes back on me. So I needed him to fill out that survey to make sure that that survey was connected to me and the good job that I did for him today. That was first in the face. Next, we could have given him the phone number to call the billing department directly, but that would have counted towards what's called my first call resolution score or my, um, my resolution rate. And, and because that customer is dialing back in, it gets picked up by the system and we recognize that maybe we didn't solve the customer's problem first time. And so that counts against me on my scorecard. So we outbound the customer because that doesn't count towards that resolution rate because it's an outbound call. We're calling the customer. They're not calling us. Third thing, uh, we because we made a second call, <laughs> 
what's happened is that I now have two calls that count towards that total call duration of roughly 40 minutes. And so my average call duration for the entire day comes down. So my average handling time for the day as a score comes down. Next thing that happened was that we had to make that transfer anyway. I, I couldn't help the customer with that billing inquiry um, because that's not what I'm trying to do. So I had to transfer the call. So I just took the hit on that one. Uh, and and, and that, that transfer would have happened anyway. So all of a sudden, we've got four key metrics. That consultant has done everything in his power to hit every single one of those metrics that we said is important. Make sure you get a customer survey filled out. Make sure you're getting good responses on your customer survey. Make sure that you're not spending too much time on the phone handling calls. We don't want customers on the phone for a long time. Make sure that you don't transfer calls. And make sure that you fix the customer's problem the first time so they don't have to call back. And that, that consultant had worked out how to hit every single one of those numbers, how to absolutely optimize every single one of those measures. Not because he was trying to game the system, but because he was trying to do everything in his power to hit those targets that we had set. And that was the best way for him to maximize hitting all of those targets, balance all of those numbers across that entire scorecard. So I wanted to share that story because I think for me, certainly it was one of those moments where I just thought, what are we doing? <laughs> and I think sometimes, you know, until you've gone out there and spent time in call centers and on the front line, you've had those powerful experiences where you've seen that happen. Um, then maybe it doesn't quite land home in the way that it does for those of us that do spend a lot of time out there doing this work for, on behalf of other companies and leaders and bringing that work back in. So uh, so, so that was what I wanted to share this week was a story around measures because the measures that you make in your organization are critical. You've got to change those KPIs and those performance measures, whether they are formally written down or informal, you must change those measures if you want any hope of changing the overall behavior in your organization. And so next week, what I'm going to talk about is shifting the philosophy of measurement changing what those measures are. We're going to talk a little bit about leading and lagging measures and how you start to shift some of that measurement practice so that you can understand what's important to customers and line everything you do up behind that, including your performance incentives and your measures so that you start to have a generative uh, process when it comes to actually delivering customer outcomes rather than this destructive internal competition that happens when we start to have all of these competing measures across all sorts of different business units um, and very quickly it can kind of descend into this game of whack-a-mole where you sort of pop one down and another one pops up. Uh, so that's it from me this week. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I hope wherever you are in the world today, you're having an awesome, awesome day and we'll see you next week for a conversation about shifting the philosophy of measurement.